How's the low light look, guys? Pretty good? Who, uh, everyone asked about low light. These cameras are not designed for low light, but, um, who's out? Get out of here, you little rugrat! <laughs> I'm gonna get you! <laughs> okay, the video that you guys have been waiting for the GoPro Hero 11 versus the DJI Osmo Action 3. I made a video on each of these cameras on launch day. Click up here or go down in the description to watch both of those videos. But the comment that you guys just wrote over and over again in both videos was, which one would you buy? I'm gonna answer that today, but we're gonna go through the cameras kind of side by side to hopefully help you choose which camera you should buy because everyone's different. You're not the same person as me and you don't have the same use case as me. So let's figure out which one of these is best for you. This video, by the way, not sponsored by either of these guys. It is sponsored though by vidIQ, the not so secret tool that I have used to get this channel to almost 300,000 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, um, go subscribe. Be the one to push us over 300,000 We'll talk more about vidIQ later in the video. First though, let's look at these two cameras and just their physical features. You can see that super similar in design, the, the GoPro being a little bit taller than this guy. They're about the same the same width though and about the same thickness, but the, the GoPro is a little taller. They've both got the big rear screens, both have big front screens. The touch screens are both really good. The DJI Action touchscreen works much better in the water. They made a point of that as a feature. If you're in a pool or a lake or or ocean, wherever you're at, you go underwater, you come out of the water and you try to use the touch screens. The Action 3 works way better than the GoPros. They both have removable lens covers, which I really appreciate. And the Action 3 does have you know, a really sweet quick switch button. And basically that just cycles through your most used settings. You can set up five custom modes in there, put them in there, and you have a physical button to get to that. On the GoPro, you gotta do that little, you gotta do this trick where you press the power button and then the shutter like, power shutter and then you get into this and you can you can cycle through those settings so it has a functionality for that i just i love that there's a separate button for it and while i think that the gopro's flip down feet are probably the best mounting solution just as far as their universality universality is that a word but basically they just fit any action mount so any action mount that you have anywhere that you come upon you could fit a gopro in there just with its flip down feet while the dji action kind of went for that that new magnetic mount redesigned check out the full video to see more about it but the redesigned magnetic mount you really gotta like work it to get it on there, but once it's on there, it's locked on there, you grab these little feet and it pops off. That is super clever, but you do have to have this piece. If you just had your camera and then there was a mount and you were like, oh, I thought I was gonna go handheld today, but I do wanna mount it. If you don't have this piece, this cannot mount to action mount things. And while magnetic mounting is really great on this, I, I pretty much always keep my GoPros on a snap mount, which I talk about a ton. And on a snap mount, it takes my GoPro and turns it into a magnetic mount. And they also have this version that has kind of the mechanical lock on there. So it's really locked in place. So, so while I think this is, I love this thing. I, I've really kind of fallen for this as a mounting solution. You do always have to have this piece with you. And I think that just as a camera goes, I think that this is probably a better solution, even though I like that one more. Do you see why I've spent a week going through these cameras to figure out which one is better? Because it's it's tricky. Because even speaking of accessories, which, which is a big part of using action cameras, all the different mounts, all the different third-party accessories, there are way more third-party accessories for GoPro than there are for DJI. And while, while this magnetic mount pretty much makes it so that you can go into almost every sort of GoPro mount that's out there, something like the battery case. This is the DJI battery case that they came out with, comes with their adventure bundle, and it holds three batteries, charges them right inside here via one USB. Look how slim this thing is, super, super sleek. I mentioned in my video that this was, this was one of the things in the package that I just kind of went, oh, that is so cool. But legit, two days after posting those videos, this company reached out to me. These guys are first power and, and look what they made. It's a GoPro battery charger via USB-C, holds three batteries and, um, is really, really similar to what DJI made. So the third party accessories for GoPro, because they have a larger share of the market still, 
lot, there's more out there. But next up is, it's the thing on these cameras that matters most to me, and that's the footage. What do these cameras look like side by side? Before we get to that though, let me take one minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, vidIQ. This channel, like I said, is about to cross the 300,000 subscriber mark, and I could not have done that one without you guys, because you're the ones that hit the subscribe button, but two, without vidIQ. With their super advanced analytical tools, I've been able to use them to understand the numbers on my channel, understand things like the keywords, understand the checklist of things that I should do for my video to give it the best chance when I send it out there into the YouTube algorithm. Not a single video gets posted to this channel before I've gone through my whole vidIQ tool chest. And if you wanna try out vidIQ on your channel, go to the first thing in the description, click over there, you get 30 days of all their analytic tools for $1. And when you see all the data and all the analytics that pop up once you've installed that Chrome extension, you'll understand how good of a deal $1 is. Okay, into the side-by-side -side footage comparison test. Here is the two cameras side-by-side -side without letting you know which is which. And just looking at that footage right there, do you have a preference? Because that's what really matters. Footage is totally subjective. Some people like super high contrast. Some people like a flatter look. Some people like tons of saturation and some people like a little more desaturated. You have to look at this footage side-by-side -side and tell which do you actually like better? And it might be different from what I like. And all this footage, by the way, is in their standard mode. So on the GoPro, that's called natural. And on the Osmo Action 3, that is called normal. But just straight out of the camera, I can see that the camera on the right has more dynamic range, holding onto the highlights better, retaining a lot of detail in those shadows. And just all around, the image has more detail. And the camera on the left, you can see, is more contrasty. It loses some of that information in the highlights. If I pause it real quick, you're gonna see there is a ton more detail in the shirt on the right than there is on the left. And drum roll, the camera on the right is the GoPro. The GoPro looks significantly better side by side. Now, of course, the GoPro is running that 10-bit color while the DJI Action 3 is still running 8-bit color. That is 16.7 million colors versus 1 billion colors. And while DJI says that we will be getting 10-bit in the Action 3 coming soon with a firmware, we don't know when. They just said later this year. And in the shot looking directly at the sun, which I realize you wouldn't be doing often, you can see a massive difference between 8-bit and 10-bit footage. The GoPro has a really nice nice gradient from the brightest point where the sun is all the way up to the top of the frame while the DJI sort of has chunky steps you can kind of see like almost bands like almost rings around the sun going out as it gets bluer and bluer but then to the low light footage comparison because because you guys asked now neither of these cameras are designed for low light I stress that all the time but if the sun goes down and you're still filming with your action camera which of these two action cameras will do better in that low light Again, I think the GoPro looks better in low light. Now there's a caveat here because watch these clips as they go on. At first, the GoPro looks much better. It's holding a lot more detail. It really looks good compared to the Osmo Action. But then once we wait till the sun's like way, way down and it's actually dark out, all of a sudden the DJI is kind of keeping a better exposure, a better white balance and the GoPro it's just dark. Again, neither of these cameras are designed for that. Let's get to vertical shooting because I know a lot of you shoot vertically. DJI has that cool magnetic mount and they came out with this little cage that you get with this camera. You put the camera in the cage. This cage now has a vertical mount on it. So now once it's in the cage, you can mount the camera vertically or you can pop it off and you can mount it horizontally. If it's out of the cage, only horizontal. If it's in the cage, horizontal or or vertical. And then GoPro just took a totally different route with that eight by seven sensor. That eight by seven sensor, it's almost a perfect square with the idea being that if there's a time when you're not sure whether you need a horizontal footage or vertical footage, or maybe you need both. Maybe you say, hey, I need to post this to Instagram Reels, but I also wanna put it on my YouTube channel, film an eight by seven, decide later, crop it to 16 by nine for one clip, take the same clip, crop the nine by 16 over to Instagram. Um, same problem, two different solutions. For me, if I have my preference, I would I would go with the GoPro's solution. I like the idea of being able to choose later in post, but for people that know that they're gonna film for vertical, um, this is a good solution. I just hate vertical footage. <laughs> okay, on to the audio comparison, and I would say that they are both pretty good in like a normal setting. If you're just walking around with the cameras on a mount, talking to just the camera itself, I would say they both sound pretty good. Now they both break down with wind. I don't really feel like an audio test is even fair on this because it's it's like super windy. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> this is a very windy day at the beach and it's a it's a rock beach again. The rocks are being noisy, but for the fun of it, which camera can you hear me better on? Ow, man! <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> 
think this should give both cameras a little better chance with the wind. I'm away from the rocks now, so now it's just wind. A little bit of waves in the background, but how well do each camera do? Picking up on just my voice. The wind reduction is on on both cameras, so this is them doing their best job in camera to, uh, to reduce wind. Who sounds better? But of course, GoPro does give you the option to add in their media mod cage or just their audio adapter. That gives you a 3.5 millimeter jack. Now I can mount any microphone. I could even mount this on top of it if I wanted to and plug in a microphone into that. And then DJI is just clever as crap. And they took their DJI wireless mic system. You can now take the receiver from this, plug it directly into the USB-C port on this. And now you have a wireless mic system that goes straight into your camera. Again, click the link in the description if you didn't watch my entire video on this camera, but I'll talk more about it in that video. Of course, you could do the same like wireless mic system with this guy and put the Rode Wireless Go on, or you can actually put the DJI, you can put the this mic system works with this also. It just works cooler with this because you don't need a, a cage, you just plug it straight in. Again though, both good options. Neither of these cameras has like some shocking lead. They're both really good cameras and they're both really good at stabilization. Like as in it almost doesn't make sense how good these little cameras are at stable. You don't need a gimbal for either of these. If anyone's trying to sell you a GoPro gimbal or an Action 3 gimbal, um, laugh at them. You don't need a gimbal for either of these cameras. The digital stabilization with Rocksteady versus Hypersmooth, uh, the both both just phenomenal. Now, I would say that GoPro probably gets a little bit of an edge here because you can shoot in an eight by seven mode in camera with stabilization turned off. And because GoPro bought Real Steady, you can take that footage, pull it into Real Steady, and do the stabilization on your computer using a much smarter processor, much more powerful processor. And it's how FPV pilots get those crazy, like super insane stabilized footage shot. It's all going through real steady and GoPro owns them now. So which of these two cameras would I choose? First, let me help you figure out how you should choose because I think that these cameras are going for not a different audience, but they have different goals in mind. GoPro was clearly trying to iterate on the Hero 10, try to come up with something that's even better than the Hero 10, which was already really good. Try to pack as many features into this thing, put that new eight x seven sensor, put 10 bit color, just pack the heck out of this thing with features. Because they're on a yearly update cycle, they're always trying to figure out how do we get people that bought the Hero 10 last year, get some of those people to also buy the Hero 11 now, which is awesome because we get a really, really feature packed camera. Now the two big downsides are one price, which we're going to talk about in a minute here and two stability because they pack so much into this. They put so much pressure on that processor. GoPros haven't always been known as the most reliable cameras. Now, to be fair, I have not had a single uh, GoPro reset on this camera yet. You don't know what a GoPro reset is. It's when your camera freezes and you have to open the battery door and you pull the battery out for a second, you put it back in, and then you can turn your GoPro back on. That was an issue on previous generations. Again, like I said, I have not had a single GoPro reset on the GoPro Hero 11. That's impressive because I had them a lot on previous generations. The Osmo Action 3 though pitched themselves as professional and reliable. They didn't go for the high resolutions and frame rates that this camera can do. This thing tops out at 4K 120 while this thing's doing 5.3K 60. This doesn't have 10 bit color yet. It doesn't have an eight by seven sensor. What they went for was let's make our Osmo Action 1 that everyone loved because it was so reliable. Um, a new version and a better. So super reliable. It just works when you need it to work. You press the button, you know it's gonna record. They really focus on it not overheating or freezing. So in cold temperatures, I'm very excited to go snowboarding with these two cameras and test them out. But I do think that even with the Enduro battery, I'm sure this thing will have an edge in very cold temperatures. Because again, they really focused on that. But what you also get with this camera because they didn't go so crazy with the features, is a much cheaper camera. The GoPro Hero 11 is $499 and the DJI Osmo Action 3 is $329. So $170 chasm that you have to cross to decide these features are that much better than, than these features. Now for me, that eight by seven sensor, that 10 bit color, better dynamic range, better highlight retention, better shadow retention, more detail in the image. For me, that $170 totally makes sense to upgrade to the GoPro Hero 11. But if those features don't matter as much to you, you can save 170 bucks and get this guy and you know that you still got a phenomenal camera. That's the thing, both of these cameras are so, so good. 
the GoPro is just a little better. Which one would you choose? Also though, in 2022, if you're walking around with one of these in your pocket, do you even need an action camera? Ring that bell, this video is coming soon. You guys rock, thank you so much for watching. Double action camera lens tap. Microphone check. Microphone check. Is the microphone working? I don't know if you saw my Instagram reel yesterday, but I made a whole video. Made, filmed the whole thing, pulled it onto the computer, and there was, there was no audio on it. This is my second time filming it. The one that you guys just saw, that was the second time I did this, so hit the like button.